How I Found Max the Mentor, Chapter 4. It's all rather vague right now, Spooky. I mean, it was a long time ago. The apparition interrupted. I dislike that label, Spooky. I prefer to simply be called the ghost of least purchase past. That's still a little long, I responded. How about we just call you Manny? Ghost. Whatever. Can we proceed? Do you remember how you met Max and why? Ralph. It's all a little bit of ancient history to me, Manny. I know I needed some help then, and I was pretty desperate. Max was someone I sought out to change my life. He had great ideas about doing lease purchase deals and sales, but that was so many years ago. I was much younger then. That was before we had the internet, social networking, email, mini iPads and iPhones. It's just all different now. I can hardly remember anything else about old Max. Well, replied the ghost, let's take a trip and see if we can jog your memory. Let's go back to the beginning and watch how this all began. We ended up apparating into the lobby of a beautiful office. There was my much younger version standing by the desk of the receptionist. I needed to listen at this point and see what I said so long ago. A lady's harsh voice began to berate my younger self. Oh no, not you again. How many times do I have to tell you that Mr. Max will not see anyone without an appointment? Why won't you understand? He is a very busy man and doesn't just meet with anyone. You have to have a recommendation or referral. I don't mind waiting. Maybe you'll have some free time or a cancellation, I hoped. For the last time, no. Get out. I'll be forced to call the police, she shouted at me. Okay, okay. Give a guy a break. I'm leaving now. The old dragon lady, I muttered under my breath. Does this irritating conversation jog any memories, Ralph? Manny the ghost inquired. I seem to remember that I did something else before I left the building. Boy, oh boy. She was one tough cookie, that Brunhilde. She almost threw me out all by herself. Max always had these tough guardians at the gate. Oh yeah, I remember. I spoke to the cleaning man with the mop by the bathrooms. Uh, it went something like this. Excuse me, sir. Um... Uh, but do you know Mr. Max? What's it to you, kid? Well, I heard he is the first person to arrive in the office every day. Is that around nine o'clock? Are you nuts? He laughed. I've been working for Max for over 20 years, and he has never come to work later than 6 a.m., just like clockwork, except for the weekends. You don't become a billionaire by watching soap operas, he added. What a question to ask. Max is fond of the finest gentlemen I know. What makes you say that, sir? I asked. Well, for starters, he paid for college for both of my kids. When I needed money to buy our first home, he was there with a loan at zero interest. Yep, Max takes care of his employees. He is the salt of the earth. Best boss I ever had. The ghost interrupted my spying on myself and asked me again if this jogged any memories. You bet. I remember now. I had the information on how to meet Max. I made a plan to arrive in the parking lot at 5 a.m. the next morning. I figured if he was there at 6 a.m. before anyone else, then I was going to beat him to the punch. I almost scared him to death when I popped out of my car and introduced myself in the dark parking lot. I thought his chauffeur, Lurch, was going to strangle me. Once things calmed down and they saw I was no threat, he told me to go to the convenience store, get him a toasted bagel and a cup of coffee, and that he would give me 10 minutes. I told him I only needed five. Manny spoke. Let's go back to that meeting and see what happened. We were whisked to the meeting, and it was all coming back to me. Ralph. Here is your black coffee and toasted bagel, sir. Max. So you're the guy who's been driving my receptionist crazy. Well, here is your five minutes. Go for it. Ralph. Well, sir, I've been in creative real estate business for a while now. And I've been running out of money and it's all getting a little frustrating. I heard that you had a secret method for controlling real estate with something called options or lease purchasing. But I have been asking around and no one seems to know much about it. I want to learn more and from someone who has the right to teach it. Max. Well, my boy, I don't know if I would call it a secret, but I would share with you one word. Leverage. In other words, using a little to control a great deal. That is what lease purchase will do for you. For the right person who understands the strategies, nuances, 
and marketing of an option. They can create unlimited wealth with just a phone and a concept. Max then shared some of his story. I came to this country with a shirt on my back, and after a few years of doing lease option deals, I was able to retire if I choose to do so. But that is something I would never do. I love the work I do. You always have to do something you enjoy rather than just to target making money. Ralph, could you teach me, Max? I am so desperate. I am going broke. I have all these looser prop loser properties. I need to turn my life around. Could you mentor me? Why should I? How are you worthy? I like to work with people who can rise to the occasion. How do I know you have the right stuff, Ralph? Well, I'm here, aren't I? I was tenacious in my research. I was thrown out of your office several times by Brunhilde. I eventually found out about your schedule in a way you could say you were my gauntlet. I wasn't going to give up until I had a chance to plead my case before you. I want to learn everything I can about becoming wealthy and creative real estate. You are the man who can do it for me. I'm begging you, sir. Give me a chance and you won't regret it. Max, I regret it already. Would you be willing to start at the bottom with no pay? I need someone to get things for me during the day, Ralph. I'm your man. I just want knowledge in return, Max. All you have to do is close your mouth and open your eyes and ears, and everything will fall into place. At that point, Manny and I left and went back to my home in the, in the present. Manny spoke. I must leave now, but before I do, think for a moment about your younger self and how motivated, creative, and focused you were in those days. I asked Ralph, where did that person go? You went on to become very successful as a lease purchase entrepreneur. You observed the great mentor and duplicated his methods. You learned about control without ownership and about multiple streams of income. You didn't have a financial worry in the world. You were willing to work hard, learn, focus on the important things, and not make silly excuses about how things are different today and all that techno nonsense you were spouting back then. I ask you, where is that Ralph of many years ago? Have you forgotten everything you were taught by Max? All the principles of the ancient society of mentors? Ralph, I feel ashamed. I just lost it all and thought I knew better. To which the ghost replied, Think about how far you have fallen. At the top of the next hour, you will meet the next spirit, known as the ghost of least purchase present. I was missed. I must bid you adieu for now. With that, he floated away into the wood-burning stove like a puff of smoke. I was standing alone and shaking, not from the cold in the room, but from all I had seen and experienced that night. What was to become of me?